Who's at Fault? Car Cash Details, Calculations, and Testimony by Joey Lovato, April Garland, and Tyvee's Titles. On August 7, 2015, an automobile accident occurred at the intersection of Elwood and Awesome Streets in Jewell, New Jersey, between a compact car driven by Mr. B. Telke and a tractor trailer driven by Miss E. Schreiner. At this intersection, the truck driver had a flashing yellow light while the car driver had a flashing red light. Neither driver claims responsibility for the accident. Mr. B. Telke claims that he made a full stop at the light before entering the intersection, while Miss Schreiner did not slow down prior to the collision. And Miss Schreiner claims that she was braking before the collision and that Mr. Telke did not stop at the flashing red light. Here was a picture depicting the crash and where the cars went after the crash. Some of the crash details are how the car tire weighed 130 newtons and the force to move a tire took 100 newtons. The truck's coefficient of friction is only 70% of the car tires. The car skidded after the accident 8.2 meters and the truck skidded 11 meters. The weight of the car is 13,600 newtons and the truck weight is 69,700 newtons. The pre-crash angle is 90 degrees, and the truck claims to have moved only 6.7 meters per second before the crash in order to stop the collision. The distance of the car to the traffic light was 13 meters at the collision, and it is said that the Ford Escort's maximum acceleration is 3 meters per second squared. Some useful equations we used in our calculations was Newton's second law of motion, F equals ma. We also use the conservation of momentum, the force friction equation, and the kinematic equations. Now we will be doing the calculations portion. Part A, solving for the coefficient of friction, uh, involves using the equation for force of friction. When rearranged, we get the coefficient of friction is equal to the force of friction divided by force of normal. When we plug in 100 for the force of friction and 130 for the force of normal, which is the weight of the one tire, we get 0.77. Because we know that the truck's coefficient of friction is only 70% that of the car's, we can simply multiply it by 0.77 and get 0.54. So now we have for the car 0.77 and coefficient for the of friction for the truck as 0.54. Part B asks us to solve for the speed of each vehicle just after the collision. This involves setting the force of friction equal to the force equation in order to solve for acceleration of each vehicle after the collision. So, by doing this, we get the coefficient of friction times normal force is equal to mass and acceleration. When we rewrite the normal force as mg, we can cancel out the masses on either side of the equation and get that the coefficient of friction times gravity is equal to acceleration. When plugging in our values for the car and the truck, we get the car has an acceleration of 7.546 and the truck has an acceleration of 5.292, both in meters per second squared. Continuing part B, we will be using those accelerations we saw for on the last slide to solve for velocity of the car just after the collision. Note, because the car is decelerating after the collision, the acceleration we saw for it should be negative. So the acceleration of the car after the collision should be negative 7.546 meters per second. Using our kinematics equations, we have the equation velocity final squared is equal to velocity initial squared plus 2AD. When we rearrange for velocity initial and plug in our values of negative 7.546 meters per second for the acceleration and 8.2 for the distance it traveled, we solve that the velocity of the car initially is 11.12, that is, just after the collision. When you repeat the same steps for the truck, you get a velocity of 10.79 meters per second. Part C. Now we have to solve for the velocity just before the collision. We can apply the conservation and momentum equation for the x and y direction separately, knowing that the car is traveling only in the y direction to begin and the truck is only traveling in the x direction. Starting with the x direction, Using our momentum equations, we know that the mass of the truck 
times the velocity of the truck initially is equal to the mass of the truck times its final velocity plus the mass of the car plus its final velocity since it was a collision. Plugging in all of our values, which includes the velocities of both the truck and the car finally, only in the x direction, hence the cosine of the, its angle, multiplied by its mass, which is simply its weight divided by 9.8, and we solve for velocity of the truck initially, we get 12.529 meters per second. When you repeat the process for the car, solving for velocity initial, you get 12.8 meters per second. So now, as a quick overview of the car crash visually, you can see that the car is claiming to have been stopped, and the truck up in the right corner is moving, and according to the driver of the truck, she was slowing down at 6.7 meters per second just before the collision, and then the collision happens at 13 meters from the stoplight for the car. Then they continue to move until both come to a stop. We have come to the verdict and decided that both vehicles are at fault. Why, you may ask? It has to do with the velocities. The velocities we calculated before the collision are 12.529 meters per second for the truck and 12.8 meters per second for the car. The car's maximum acceleration is 3 meters per second squared. Using kinematics with a distance of 13 meters, if the car stopped at the stoplight, the car's maximum velocity is 8.83 meters per second. For the truck, Ms. Schreiner claimed to have only been going 6.7 meters per second before the collision. This means that both the car and the truck were going faster than provenly possible through physics, or claimed. Therefore, the crash was caused by both vehicles.